Let's go. Grand Rising, everyone. Bokato, shalom, shalom, shalom. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's see who is coming on. Glory to God. The Lord is faithful, mighty, mighty amazing in the tabernacle. Awesome, wonderful. Grand Rising, shalom, shalom, shalom. Come on through. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grand Rising, New York. Come on in. Wow. Georgia, Memphis, Washington State. Grand Rising, Boca Tov. Come on through. Amen. Glory to God. Let's um, grand rise all my dominionaires, all of our partners all around the world, literally. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in. Thank you, thank you. Let's just go ahead and pray so we can get into what the Father has for us. South Carolina, I see you. Come on through. Wow. I see you, George. Come on in. <laughs> Cleveland, Tennessee. Linda, I see you. Atlanta, New Jersey. The Dolphins, Delaware. <laughs> Well, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. It's our honor. We are honored and awe of your presence. And we thank you for your grace, your glory, your authority, and your wisdom. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the blood, the water, and the spirit. These three agree. And we thank you that we'll be secured today by your blood. And angels will help us bring it to pass. Let this word penetrate, saturate our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I want to say thank you to all of you who held the fort down in Marion while we were in Texas. We had a phenomenal time there. God did some, some unusual things, and we're building that. So we just went to lay a foundation. We were building on that. And so thank all of those who hung out with me in Texas this weekend. It was rainy. It was uh uh, spring break, but we had an amazing group of people who came through from us, from Houston, from, man, they came from a lot of places. So thank you guys um, for coming and uh, being a part of what, what God wants to do uh, in that area. And sometimes you don't understand the instructions, you just have to obey the instructions. And uh, so we, we so appreciate all of those and uh, thank you. Um, Pastor Fenwimming and Dominion for holding it down here at home. Uh, so uh, let's just let's just get into what I feel like the Lord is saying this morning. This is going to be one of those mornings. It's going to be kind of sobering. It's probably not going. You know, it's not going to be all on the hanging on the chandelier this morning. But we want to give you some information. And the next times that we see each other, I'm going to be giving you some information that can be really kind of challenging uh, for you. And pull you out of your comfort zone, pull you out of tradition and religion. You know, that's my thing. And really moving into the things. Now, uh, once we go off the air, I'm really warning our partners and our e-members uh, about storing up and stocking about this April 8th eclipse. We're going to get into that a little bit. People are saying, why are you not warning the people? I just, you know, um, sometimes the fight, you, you know, you have to fight for things. But if I'm going to prophetically give you the word of God, I got to give you the whole counsel of God. So for months, we've been telling you um, uh, to store up and do all of these things. But I want to give you a little backdrop of what, and I've had some amazing friends that did all the work and, and began to um, send me things, uh, which we would already been saying, uh, but uh, they had, they took the time to do a more in-depth study. And uh, so I appreciate all of those 
um, who helped me navigate this. And then on Wednesday, we're going to really, really, really sit down and go um, through every one of what I believe God is doing. And one of the things I want you to do is really be asking the Holy Spirit, what is your part to play? So you don't just, just leave it to people to tell you what to do. Be led by the Holy Ghost. And so one of my job is jobs is to make sure that you are listening to Holy Spirit and that if you can never if you if you can't hear my voice or your man and woman of God's voice, you hear the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit. So you're like, I don't believe in, in the Holy Spirit. See, once you shut down the Holy Spirit or your belief system is not where it needs to be. The Holy Spirit will go real quiet on you. And some of you have allowed uh, you, our ignorance. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say some strong things today. Our ignorance and disbelief uh, to shut down the Holy Spirit. And I want you to keenly be aware of what Holy Spirit is saying. Now, how many of you been feeling like there is something coming? There is something that, that there's a nor on the inside of you called the Holy Ghost that has been giving you like, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to, you know, and whatever Holy Spirit tells you to do, that's what you have to do because we're entering into this season where we're we're going to see things. Now, you know, we go by the Hebraic calendar. We go by God's calendar. It is not the Jews calendar. It is God's calendar. It is most time called the Jews calendar because they're the only ones that keep it. But it is God's calendar. When we look in Leviticus and Exodus, and I've written a whole book on it. Um, um, uh, the Hebraic feast and, and the days and all of that unlocking the Hebraic understanding of how to move into it, these ancient portals and how to understand this because these are prophetic signs of what father would do in the earth. And we've got to come out of, I just want a prophecy. I just want, I want good. I want goosebumps. I want this. No, the Bible says that the sons of Issachar knew the times and the seasons. And we have to know the times and the seasons of your life. You've got to ask the Holy Spirit, what season am I in? What is my timing in this season? What do I need? Do I have and sikula ban siba kula man sebe kula bandele ban so raman kitata? Some of you have a short window to get things done. Some of you, he says, pray for three days. I'm gonna shift some things. We're in a season of repositioning, relocation, and restoration, but we're also in a season of repentance, and and we have a short window to get the repentance done. I see you, Apostle Dwan. Uh, and so, so I really feel like that the apostolic prophetic voices really need to cry out that we are in, um, we're in an amazing season, but we're in a season of warning. We're in a season where God has given us this short window to repent. And we've got to wake up while the enemy and society wants to lug us to sleep with social media and with all the cares of the world that we're not looking at the signs of the times and we're not looking at what is going to happen. So April 8th, Get this, April 8th, there's coming a solar eclipse. Now, it may not last but a few minutes, but it's the signs of the times. And when we look at the context of it, 
we're going to see. Now, I'm really just going to give you the introduction. And Wednesday, I'll have all the maps. I have all of the things, where it intersects, how it intersects. Uh, in 2017, um, there were seven cities, maybe uh, Salem. We're going to give you all of that. And then what happened after 2017, each one of them had a war has started around uh, each Polar eclipse, um, and even maybe civil things may be coming. And so we need to pray and repent. Why do we look at the signs of time? Because April 8th is Rosh Kadesh for the month of Nisan, which is the month of Passover. You, you can't, you can't hardly make this stuff up. So let's go to Genesis one. Let's go to Genesis one um, and fourteen. Let's go to Genesis one fourteen. I really believe that these, you know, we're not preaching enough, and I put myself on it that Jesus is coming, and the revelation of Jesus coming is a personal rapture. That means you can't think that, oh, it's going to happen 20 years from now. That am I ready? Am I ready? If I'm personally raptured out of here, now I know the rapture and I know the second coming of Jesus, but what are you ready for spiritually? And how do we prepare physically and spiritually because the great conjunct and the great signs in the heaven is telling that everyone has to be ready personally. We are the church. Is your personal church ready for a rapture? Now we've been talking about rapture all my life. And they haven't happened. But Jesus is coming. And I think he's coming personally before he's coming corporately. And that personal rapture and that personal repentance has to come to a level where I get rid of sin. I get rid of anything in my life. If you died right now, could you stand before the almighty clean and pure with a level of intimacy where he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. How, 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 how? When you stand before him, are you ready right now? If anything happened to you, are you ready? And one of my assignments to you is to help you get ready. There's a level of repentance. There's a level of turning away. There's a level of coming back to Christ. I'm talking about not coming just to a church just to say, but I'm talking about engaging intimacy, engaging. Are you a real believer? The Bible says you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. But are you a believer? Because the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. And we can't, we can't, Amando, we got to quit skating through life with this helter skelter message of grace where we can do anything and God will forgive us. We see him as, as a father, but we don't see him as a judge because there are certain protocols and laws that we have broken that the enemy has a legal right. And until we repent and change, he says in First Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and what? Pray. We don't even pray no more. We don't pray. I live on Surya We don't pray. You're it's not how much I pray, how much do you pray? 
How much do you intercede? How much do you fast? How much do you read your word? How much are you engaging the things of God? April 8th is coming. There is a, a total eclipse. Darkness is coming, but light. The Bible says in Isaiah 60, arise and shine for the light of God is come. The Bible says gross darkness is coming. And that's why we have to shine because gross darkness is coming upon the earth. And while we're running, trying to have fun, and I'm not against all of this, but we have lugged ourselves to sleep and things are on the horizon. Let me, let me calm down. Let me calm down. <laughs> Genesis 1. 14 and God said let there be firmament uh, lights in the firmament firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs let them be the lights the stars the constellation the moon the sun is for times or signs and seasons somebody type it signs and seasons signs and season and if you don't study the stars I'm not talking about um uh, 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 astrology. I'm talking about astronomy. I'm not talking about your horoscope, but looking at the stars. The Bible says that a star guided the wise men or the magi to Jesus. And when you look at this, it is for times of, or signs. It is a sign. It is to bring us into that season for days and for years, for days and for years. That's why we do the feast, the Mohadim, the appointed times of God, because the Bible is written around the feast. We've allowed this paganism, uh, uh, and I'm going to hit this thing really hard this year, this paganism to creep into the body of Christ. And we have glorified Catholicism and the Roman Catholic paganism into the body of Christ and tried to tell God when we should celebrate certain things. My birthday is in February. If you celebrate it in November, I would look at you a little funny. Thank you, but I'm not born in that way. It really... That doesn't move me because you don't know my day. You don't know my month. You don't know me. We, we got to know for times and for seasons. I'm coming. I'm coming. Don't come for me because I'm coming back for you. So the times and the seasons. We're times and seasons or signs and seasons. The word sign is off. It comes from the root word. It means consent or agree. That means the constellation, the stars, the heavens are agreeing. It is the act of a covenant between two parties. It comprises or comprises of the word olive, tov, and vav. Olive, tov, and vav. Olive symbolizes power and strength like an ox head. Vav signifies a tick peg, denoting securing, unhooking. And tov is a cross stick to make a, a mark or a signal, which is the same sign that will come over America. And we'll talk about it's going to make a perfect X. And I'll have all the maps because I didn't want to do this this morning. I was just going to do it Monday, uh, Wednesday. And the Lord says, do it this morning. I said, God, I don't have, I don't have my slides. I don't, I don't. He said, do it. Because I want the people mind to get in preparation, repentance mode, and to see what God is saying to you. And I've been learning all of our churches, all of our pastors and leaders to tell their people about what's coming. And so when you put all those letters together, it invokes the image of a plowman guiding an ox harnessed by a plow aiming for a distant landmark on the horizon. the tav, the vav, and the olive. 
the alpha and the omega, the tav, the olive. And so when you put this in contents, we see a sign occurring in the eclipse uh, to remind God and us of his covenant with Abraham that passed through uh, on to the, the Jewish people and, and to us. Let me help you. I'm, I'm going to say something challenging. We are the household of God. I'm going to keep my mouth. We are the household of God. We are his children. Amen. Amen. And so when we looked at every total eclipse, there has been war or pestilence around every total eclipse. Y'all hearing me? We got our head in the sand somewhere. Want another prophecy because you ain't did nothing with the last prophecy you got. We got all of this word and we've been loved to sleep by the enemy because we know more about people's social lives than we do the Holy Ghost. We more no more. I am, I am a host. I am a shy. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. So Genesis 1.14 tells us that the sun and the moon are directly tied to the feast and the festivals of God. And since the eclipse has occurred over America, the warning is to America. Yes, we have been the power nation for many years, but because of our arrogance, ignorance, and disobedience, the judgment of God can come up on our nation. Now you can say, y'all know I'm not, I don't talk a whole lot about judgment, but I really feel like we're in a season where we, it is necessary for us to rebuke Lamanda, begin to repent and turn ourselves back to God. Well, we're in a nation as a believer where we are having battles over where we should abort a baby or not. Battles over sexuality. Battles over things that clearly is defined in the word of God. What side you should be standing on. We have people believing things that is directly opposing the word of God. And we're okay with it because we want to be in the in crowd. And we've played it safe too long. We're coming out. We're coming out. And you're going to have to make a stand. You're going to have to make a stand. You're going to have to make a stand. I said, you're going to have to make a stand. I'm seeing people come out of things that they said they'd never come out of. Freemason, fraternities and sororities, they're coming out of things they made pacts with, made vows with. They're coming to a place of repentance or turning and changing. Y'all not going to like me. I don't care. Uh, no, 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 no. When you make an oath and when you make a vow that directly opposes God, directly opposes the word of God, how do you tell God it's okay to do something that he clearly uh, earmarks as sin or as an abomination? We got to get back to old school repentance and preaching holiness and purity and singleness of heart. So the eclipse that occurred in 2017 was totally directly over seven uh, cities named Salem. 
seven cities named Salem, which is the name of Jerusalem was Salem was the name of Jerusalem until David conquered it and renamed it Jerusalem. So you can't make this stuff up. You, you, you can't. You just can't make it up. So in 17, we saw a lot of sevens. Seven was represented as God's original covenant or the Sabbath. <laughs> and now you see why we switched. Come on here. It is. It was the first law decreed over the land to observe uh, the Sabbath. This was the land to observe the Sabbath, the seventh day, the uh, Jubilee year, the seventh, the seventh week, the timing of the Lord. Now, when we're coming into the significance of April 8th, it is the fourth month on the Gregorian calendar. It is four. It is four. Um the number four represents time and transition. Time and transition. We've seen major things that upheaval our lives. We saw where the um, thing that happened, because I don't want this taken now, the thing that happened a couple of years ago that caused all of our lives to, to be shifted, changed, repositioned um, forever. And we need to start looking at things that will begin to happen like that and begin to happen more frequently. Are y'all hearing me? and being able to transition, reposition, relocate at the drop of a hat, change your mindset. That's why you have to get in this word and the word has to become you. We're in the year 2024, 5784, and we're in a year of time and transition. So that's why we're doing the whole uh, minding me on repositioning. Why? Because God is about to do that. You're going to be repositioned spiritually and physically. Some of you things are happening. So get your mindset. If you're not accustomed to change, get ready for change. Get ready for things to change drastically. Time did not exist until the fourth day of creation. If there is no sun or no moon, how do you distinguish the night from the day? How do you tell time? The sun and the moon tells the times and other signs and the seasons. We're in 2024 which is the year of Dalet, which most of us said door. Mm -hmm. But it's also specifically talking about a time period or transition period that we have this time period to go through the door of repentance, go through of the door of purity, go through the door of making right what was wrong go through. You have a short window. Remember, he told the children of Israel, he says, put the door, put the blood on the doorpost for tonight the deaf angel is coming. Now, what if they had awaited? Uh, it, you have a door of opportunity. And when that door of opportunity closed, Caliban Suriman, like tag and shit, when you have that door of opportunity closes, Noah built the ark, gave him a 120 year door of opportunity. Once the door closed, only eight people survived. And you can sit there and think, well, ain't nothing going to happen. It's only going to be dark for a few moments. It is not just what's happening in the physical. You have to have the Holy Spirit to say what is 
my role to play in this whole eclipse, this total darkness, what kind of light? How do we move this door? What door of opportunity? What door of fasting? What door of prayer? What door before the door closes? What am I supposed to do? Somebody say transition. It's a door. It's a door. It's a door. And we were like, the doors are going to swing open door by doors. But it also, because once the door closes, it's like the five versions, the five foolish and the five wise. Because of somebody's tardiness, because the bride was late under my soto, they deemed the five, five brides or the five women that ran out of oil was foolish. But because somebody was late to their door of opportunity, it caused others to be locked out. Now, 2017, the first eclipse occurred at past seven cities in America called Salem, which represented Jerusalem. The number seven was a warning to America concerning Jerusalem and Israel and Israel concerning their covenant with God. And so I want you to hear something. And it, it now what happened after 2017, two major events happened after the eclipse of 2017. It was God's warning that America's covenant with Israel and Israel a covenant with God. Now get this. Y'all stop talking about things you don't know nothing about. Listen, the United States through Trump, moved the embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. <laughs> it, it gave global recognition to Jerusalem that was in May of 2018. It was the 70th, 70th, 7th, 70th year, y'all know what I'm saying it, of independence where they were formed of a nation. I'm not going to say all I could say right there because this is a morning power up and we're going to do this Wednesday. But let me quickly say this. This eclipse is the sign of Jonah because this eclipse will pass through or by seven cities called Nineveh. Anybody remember Nineveh in the Bible? Is when God sends Jonah. Jonah doesn't want to go to Nineveh. Because God is about to destroy Nineveh and he goes to tell them to repent. Don't be a Jonah in this season where you put your head in the sand and want to go somewhere else. And God will have to have something to swallow you up to put you back to the place you need to be. So immediately following the solar eclipse, which will happen on April 8th, and y'all know, uh, April 8th at 6 is when the month of Nisan starts. April 9th, which is Nisan 1, which is, you know, the evening to the morning is the first day. And so when we look at this, we look at a, 
we look. I wish I, and I'm going to have the sign. You see, it's going to make a perfect X over America. And um, this was given to me by um, Pastor um, Amelia Quinn. Um, and we're going to break all of it down. And I don't, I don't want to get too deep. Uh, in this this morning. But it's going to hit in our state, which is Little Rock, is our capital, our Kansans. We got to pray. It is skip over, hit some part of Tennessee near Nashville. So it's all around. And and so it's it's going to be quite amazing how this thing moves. And when we talk about Nineveh, and I'll break down all of these, where exactly it's going to happen, when it's exactly going to happen, how do we need to pray? Beginning to prepare yourself physically and spiritually, stocking up. I've been telling you guys this for a long time getting things necessary. These are not the only places, Arkansas and Tennessee, that's going to hit. It's just going to be close to us. And I'll break down in Texas where it's going to, all of the places that we're going to see the X. So you will be keenly aware. And I really believe that God is saying, are we going to run from our mission and put and go off and do things that Jonah didn't want to go to them? And some of us saying, it's okay, nothing going to happen. It's only going to be dark for a few minutes. See? No. Nah. You got to understand the spiritual implication. They're, they're talking about flooding. They're talking about maybe an earthquake. They're talking about it is never a good sign when we have a total eclipse over America. The Indians knew it was a bad omen. And so we have to watch and pray. And so I've been telling all of our pastors and all of our leaders and our church, we're going to be crying and asking God to forgive us. We're going to be repenting. We're going to be crying for mercy. We're going to be crying for mercy. Mercy. Mercy on us. Mercy on our families. Mercy on our congregation. Mercy on our nation. Mercy on our president. Mercy on the laws that we violated, the spiritual laws. Mercy, Father, for the innocent blood that we've shed. Mercy. And we're going to have a whole prayer list come Monday. We're, we're, we're going to hit this thing. And every day, we're going to be decreeing the mercies of God. Don't get bogged down and love to sleep and be entertained by the world when chaos in the heavens are going on. And we got our head in the sand talking about, this is a little eclipse, a little eclipse. I want to see it. No, you... you. Hmm. So it's no wonder that Israel is in war. Haiti is having an upheaval. Things are happening in America and we want things to go back to normal. Never. What is the new normal? What's going on? 
Transition. Transition. Listen with your heart. Listen with your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit, what are you supposed to do for the people you have influence over? How do you prepare them? Stock up on your waters. We just, one of our apostles just sent me uh, where she lives in Michigan. They are under a water boil. It is beginning. It's already beginning. Roll blackouts are coming. Uh, phone towers are going down. Internet has been shoddy. We've had a guy at our church for two weeks because of our internet. Just they don't even know why we don't have great internet. <laughs> what are we going to do if I can't get to you? What's the mean if all technology goes down? How are we going to begin to shift? And the next several days, we're going to give a plan out. If we have no internet, if we, what are we going to do corporately in the spirit realm? If we have no ability to engage each other, what is that going to look like? Do you know phone numbers? Do you have an emergency plan? Do you have an escape route? Do you have batteries? Do you have things that if things go down, where are your children going to meet you? Do you have all of your stuff in one location? Do you have your prepared list? We have a list. Do you have, my, 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 my congregation has the list. Do you have a list? And somebody said, well, what if nothing happens? Nothing happens. We minimize and avert it through prayer, the things that should have come upon the nation. But if we don't do anything, God gave the children of Israel insight and revelation through a man named Joseph who prepared for seven seasons or seven years of leanness. After you came out of this fast, 60% of you cannot go back the way you've been eating. You've told me. Your whole diet has changed. Why? Because God sees that something is coming. Yes, Pastor Green, we need to be on our prayer watches. So when the Lord tells you to pray, turn the dog on TV off. Turn the chatter out of your ear and pray. Pastor Soul said she's still fasting. I'm still fasting. Your animals are going crazy because they know something is up. What's going on? Transition. Reposition. And a level of repentance that we never know. Come on, let's pray. You don't want to miss Wednesday night. I'm going to have all of my stuff together. I'm going to have the maps. I'm going to have timelines. I'm going to have all these things. We're going to be spiritually discerning on how to move in this season. Stephen says she noticed with the animals. Wales beached in Virginia. See, y'all? They even know the, in, the animals have an intuition that's tied to nature. And they know when things are shifting. Yeah, food don't even taste the same. God, why? Because God is changing our appetite and our palate. And we keep wanting to go back to onion, fish, and garlic like the children of Israel. And it don't taste right. Nothing tastes. I tried to eat a piece of chicken. I, I was like, what is this? What's going on? Yeah, we can share that list on Wednesday. Where, whales are being 
There were three beached in Virginia. They're watching. Ava says she's watching the birds. Earthquakes. We're seeing floods. We're seeing things happen. We're seeing all these things happening. The signs of the times. So get non-perishable items. Get your water, batteries, candles, lights. So if there is rolling blackouts, you will be able to uh, navigate. Are y'all hearing me? Begin to pray and ask God to forgive our nation, our arrogance, our ignorance. Forgive leaders, pastors, preachers, apostles. Let there be repentance from the altar to the door. I'm calling all of my apostolic, prophetic, those who will operate in the fivefold and beyond to begin to legislate and begin to teach your people that we need to pray and repent. Yeah, you might want to get some, have a little cash on hand. So if the banks go down and there is no internet, there is no way for you to transfer money or whatever, have a little cash on hand. All right, that's enough this morning. Let me get off of here, my God. And someone's like, well, I don't believe in all that. I believe God. God is a merciful God. Yes, he is a merciful God. But we violated a whole lot of laws in the spirit over America. Portable phone charges, walkie-talkies, all kinds of things. Y'all need to prepare. All right. Now, I love you with the love of the Lord. Let, let me let me see what we got here. Don't forget uh, that minding me, we're going to do. Don't forget Wednesday. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the whole thing. What's going on? How do we move into this season? How do we get to a place of repentance and healing? How do we bombard the the throne of God with a level of repentance? And um, where we turn from our wicked ways and he will hear the heavens. And so don't forget that minding me will be March 26, 27. Don't forget that. And then our Passover weekend uh, impartation will be April 26 and 27. Um, I'll be in Virginia on the 29th of this month. Uh, Y'all can come and hang out with us. And then the April 8th preparedness thing and then Supernatural Summit. I don't want to belabor all of that. Um, somebody said get a generator. Um, we'll have all of these things on a list for you um, come Wednesday. But get prepared uh, and make sure your people are prepared. That if, if you have neighbors, if you have overreach, if, if you have that. Um, you can do it. Come back to Mississippi. Invite me. I'll come. Uh, Richmond. Um, I'll be in Virginia uh, with pastors uh, with the Wyatts. Speaking Spirit Ministries. Speaking Spirit Ministries in Virginia. Amen. Is there a place to donate, Star says? Uh, yes. Uh, they're going to put it on the screen. Um, you can go to dominionworld.org, uh, PayPal. You can go to Giblify, find Dominion Marion, um, and you can do that or cash app dollar sign DWOM 126. 126, obedience. Tell them to be obedient, yes. When in Virginia, I need a word is back on. Thank you, Jesus. And Virginia is the 29th, Friday, March the 29th at 7 p.m. 
Speaking Spirit Ministries. The Ways to Sow is right there. Come to Baton Rouge. I'm telling y'all, come. Just invite me. Amen. See you, Mother Delaney. Obedience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the 29th is at 7 p.m. Yes. All right. I got to get off here. Love you with the love of the Lord. Y'all go in here. And um, yes, I'm coming to Montgomery. Um, and look, y'all, I'm coming. I'm coming. I see you, nephew, to Orlando. I'll be in Virginia. I leave Virginia. And then I go to Houston the first week of April. The second week, if things are okay, I'll be in Detroit. The third week, I'll be in Montgomery, Alabama. And then uh, we'll have our impartation uh, weekend. So all of our, we'll put our, our schedule out there so you can all be there. So it's up there. Y'all see those dates? They're, they're going to pin them up there so you can see them. Um, and then you can go back on my web page. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. He's going to increase your greatness and give you calm and comfort you on every side because we know how to repent. So cry for mercy in Jesus' name.